The stream will begin shortly. B-Side Cincinnati 2016 is sponsored by GE Aviation, Ashland, CBTS, Encore Technologies, Morphic. Join the conversation. Tweet us at B-Sides Cincy. The stream will begin shortly. B-Side Cincinnati 2016 is sponsored by GE Aviation, Ashland, CBTS, Encore Technologies, Morphic. Join the conversation. Tweet us at B-Sides Cincy. The stream will begin shortly. B-Side Cincinnati 2016 is sponsored by GE Aviation, Ashland, CBTS, Encore Technologies, Morphic. Join the conversation. Tweet us at B-Sides Cincy. The stream will begin shortly. B-Side Cincinnati 2016 is sponsored by GE Aviation, Ashland, CBTS, Encore Technologies, Morphic. We we'll talk to you about our next topic. Great. Thanks, Nate. So uh, I wanted to start off uh, my talk uh, with a couple of stories. So uh, twice in my career, I've been hired as kind of a second thought, right? So the people they thought they wanted to hire at first, uh, they tried with them, and then they came to me. So I've been a second thought a couple times in my life, uh, in my career. Uh, the first time was I was working at a nonprofit, which was pretty cool. I was doing some fun things with technology. Um, but I wasn't getting paid anything, and then they moved me an account into an accounting role, which I didn't like and I wasn't very good at. Um, so I took a, uh, a job contract position at Armco Steel in Coshocton, Ohio, um, which was pretty cool. Um, but what I found out is that I was a little bit worried because you know they were looking for all these different skills that I didn't think I had, but I think the contract company kind of talked me up a lot more than what I was. So I was a little worried going into this job. Uh, but pretty quickly, after a couple weeks, I was kind of into things. I was doing some development with, uh, with C and, and Excel mic macros, and it was this quality control system. It was pretty cool. But what I found out was that, again, I was kind of a second thought. So uh, my bosses were, um, were hiring a lot of computer science graduates right out of college, uh, thinking, well, you know, we're doing development. We're hiring computer science grads to do this. And what they learned is that, these grads right out of, high, out of college um, couldn't impact their company very much. It took them, you know, six months to get them ramped up. And by that time, a lot of these kids would leave because they hated Coshocton as this little tiny town, right? Um, so I was the second thought, right? So, um, you know, I didn't have a computer science degree. I had an industrial and systems uh, engineering degree. Um, so I really didn't have what, the traditional match what they thought they were looking for. Um, the second time was my current job. Uh, I'm a faculty member here at the University of Cincinnati. Um, so again, um, they were hired, they were interviewing folks, and I realized again I was in this kind of second round. Well, let's try it again. Uh, the first round they were interviewing for the traditional PhD holding 
uh, candidates, uh, which is fine for a lot of faculty positions, but at this time, about 15 years ago, UC was starting an applied computing degree. They called it computer science technology. And so they're interviewing these uh, PhD uh, folks holding PhD, computer science, computer engineers, who are great and did great research, but they couldn't really teach the applied computing uh, in the dot-com boom. And so again, I kind of ran into this situation where the organization thought they wanted something, and then either through interviews or through kind of tripping up, they found, oh, that traditional what we thought we wanted isn't actually, didn't actually fit what we're trying to do here. And so that's really the basis for the talk today is, okay, we're kind of at this space in cybersecurity, right? So, um, you know, you guys are, perhaps some of you are hiring uh, folks out of computer science or IT or IS, uh, and you need some specific skills, but maybe you're not finding the right uh, type of folks. Or for your students, maybe you're looking for a job, you're not sure exactly what are the jobs out there, right? Um, and so this, what this talk is about is this movement nationally to create kind of guidelines on what should a cybersecurity degree program, a four-year degree program, look like, right? So what, sh what kind of skills and abilities should students have coming out of a program like that? So that's kind of what this talk is about. Um, so I used to start off a lot of my talks with this... Uh, this uh, caricature, which was made about 30 years ago, amazingly enough, at King's Island. So you go and you sit down and they say, you know, what do you like to do? And I like computers. I like, you know, banging on the TRS-80 that we had at school. Uh, and so they made this little cartoon. If you haven't seen War Games, it's a classic, right? Um, and so I never really got into trouble doing this type of thing, although my first job as a co-op student, I did have military police show up at my cubicle working for the DOD. Um, I'll tell you that story over a beer if you want to hear that. Um, <laughs> so I, I told that story, uh, I was at a defense contractors conference up in Dayton last week and got, got, got some ooze with that. Um, so so I, I never really got into trouble, but this was me uh, 30 years ago, um, back in when I was a junior high and high school. And where have I gone to? Well, not very far, right? So, uh, so I've now uh, become the, the professor uh, teaching these types of things. So again, still uh, hacking away on computers, but uh, a little bit nerdier, maybe some, some stereotypes in there uh, as I've gotten through this stuff. So before I get into this discipline, um, I wanted to just mention uh, a few words about some of the research I do that's not connected to the discipline per se, uh, but just to give you an idea of, of what I do other than uh, teaching students. Um, so I found this cartoon which, I, which pretty much epitomizes what my research uh, team does. So it says, we've narrowed down our security risks down to these two groups, right? So everyone who works here and everyone who doesn't work here, right? So, uh, so this is, you know, really what you guys do in industry, right? You either focus on the bad guys or you focus on, you know, security awareness training. And so um, what I've done over, so again, I've been working in this field and, and realized things aren't getting much better, right? Uh, so I decided to embed myself with um, some criminologists here at the University of Cincinnati. If you don't know, it's one of the top three uh, criminology departments in the world. The output of the research that's done here in criminal justice and criminology is second to none in the world. It's fantastic. So I embedded myself with these researchers for about three years to try to say, well, you know, you guys have been studying, you know, crime prevention and criminology for hundreds of years. Um, you know, is there something there? And there's actually been, you know, some good research on stopping traditional crime. Over the past 30 years, there's been this precipitous drop in street crime. And it's all based on some theoretically backed, empirically uh, driven research. So what I decided to do is embed myself with them and say, can we use some of the research from criminology and victimology and really impact what we do in cybersecurity? And so that's what my research team and I do. Uh, we're diatomic cybersecurity, uh, if you're interested in, in working with us. Uh, what we do is we focus on the actions of non-malicious insiders. We use an empirical uh, methodology to really tease out uh, risk of data breach at three levels. At the organizational level, so your organization based on size, type, location, you know, what's your risk based on that? Uh, at the department level, do you have departments that are more at risk for divulging 
uh, sensitive information as other departments and at the individual level, right? So do you have specific employees that need some real good mitigation uh, based on what they're doing? And, and we, come we come at that really uh, through three different ways. We have a database that we started with the Privacy Rights Clearinghouse database of thousands of data breaches. And then we've taken that database and added a lot of uh, attributes to the data to try to tease out, okay, what types of organizations suffer what types of risks based on employee actions. Uh, we use uh, employee surveys to get at, you know, why are our employees acting this way? Right? Because if, if we don't know and we just throw security awareness training at them, but their boss is saying, hey, we're driving revenue, don't restart that server, right? Don't patch, we're driving revenue, then the security awareness training may not work. So we really, you know, we do surveys to try to figure out, you know, what's motivating these employees to act the way they are. They are. We also do interviews with the employees. Um, and then we match these data up against your uh, vulnerability scan data. Right? So we match who's responsible for what systems, what's the timed mitigation for uh, these systems, and compare those against the data that we're collecting. And then we use this uh, assessment to feed into uh, mitigation strategies, again, borrowing from criminology and victimology using empirically driven uh, customized solutions. And that's me with my uh, criminology uh, focused partners. So one of them is a professor here. One just took a job at Indiana State, uh, but we'll still be working together. So again, we really look at the causes for the behaviors and motivations of employees and how they affect uh, data breach. All right, so digging into the real part of the talk. All right, so, um, so that's my research. Uh, coming back to kind of, I talked about a couple of jobs I've had. Uh, so I am a faculty member here at the University of Cincinnati out of the School of Information Technology. Uh, so at UC we have uh, cybersecurity scattered about the university. So we're a comprehensive university. Uh, we have it out of the School of IT, which is where I am, which is an applied computing. I'll talk more about that in a minute. We obviously have it out of computer science. Uh, we have it out of uh, math. We do some cryptography type stuff out of there. Out of the School of Law. So our law school does some uh, cybersecurity. Uh, who am I missing? Business does cybersecurity. Uh, political science does uh, policy level cybersecurity. I actually teach a class with the head of our political science department we call Cyber Attack, which is a lot of fun. We put students in teams and they come up with potential attacks against organizations and we role play those. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so we all work together uh, in doing cyber at the university. Uh, let's see where I'm at. Let's see. We are also um, now um, uh, have NSA, DHS uh, certifications as Centers for Academic Excellence uh, in Cyber Defense and Cyber Operations. So we're one of a few universities that have the dual designation of those two. And we'll talk about what that means in a, in a couple minutes. Uh, let's see. I think where I'm going to go with this. All right. Um, so coming back to, uh, again, the School of IT and what I was hired into, um, I'm going to talk about kind of this uh, movement of IT and the disciplines because I think it matches a lot what's happening now with, with cybersecurity. Um, so again, about 15 years ago, UC was creating this applied computing program uh, because businesses like Armco Steel and Coshocton were having problems getting CS grads who could actually implement things and apply some of the, the theories they were learning in computer science. Um, so there are universities across uh, the country who are building similar programs at uh, Purdue, at uh, BYU, at RIT, DePaul. So a lot of universities were doing this, creating these applied computing uh, programs out there. And that's what we did here at the University of Cincinnati as well. Um, and so I'll talk in a minute a little bit more about that. So again, I teach out of a school of IT, which is more of an applied computing. We teach enough theory so that students can adapt to new technologies and so they can troubleshoot when things go wrong. But we're much more of a tactical uh, uh, program um, than computer science, which is more theory-based. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So again, 15 years here teaching uh, systems courses, cloud computing infrastructure as a service, data center operations, network security, um, the cyber attack class. So in the systems, networking, security type of areas over the past 15 years. Um, so these universities, as we got together, 
you know, putting together uh, applied computing programs, we said, well, you know, we need to get together to form kind of a group to talk about what does it mean to create these applied computing programs. And we aligned ourselves with ACM, which is the biggest computing professional society in the world. We became a special interest group uh, under ACM for IT education. Uh, we landed on this word, this uh, name for the, divis the, the discipline, information technology which again is a, an applied computing um, area. So ACM's other special interest groups you may have heard of, um, SIGGRAPH, SIGCHI, uh, some other major players in computing. So uh, I've been involved with ACM and this special interest group. I was their chair for about three years. I hosted the conference here in Cincinnati one year, which was pretty cool. Um, and there were a few of us here from UC who participated in this uh, creation of IT as a specific discipline. Um, under ACM. Uh, ABET and CSAB are the accreditation uh, boards for computing. So programs, uh, if they want to get accredited for computer science, information systems, computer engineering, information technology, uh, they go through ABET or the Computing Sciences Accreditation Board. So I've been involved with them for several years, so I go out on site to universities and go through their IT curriculum, talk to students and faculty, and we actually designate um, accreditation for these uh, programs uh, around the country. So I'm very involved in that. Uh, with that as well, I'm on the, uh, the Computing Criteria Committee of ABET. And so what we do is we take uh, recommendations for changes to the accreditation guidelines, and then we kind of implement those into the system. So we've been working a lot this year. Uh, the big, maybe surprising thing is right now, to get accredited as a computer science program, you do not need to offer or require any, any uh, cybersecurity course at work. And you can get accredited. You may have seen recently there was a report that showed of the top 10 computer science uh, degrees in the country, none of them required any type of security coursework. And only two of them had security electives. Of the top 50 computer science programs in the country, only three of them required security courses. It's pretty amazing. Luckily, we here at UC uh, do require, in the computer science, do require uh, cyber. Pretty sure NKU does as well. Um, so, so we're seeing this. So this is a big thing that we're working on in the criteria committee is to infuse to make sure that in the future, computer science programs will require uh, some security. And it's amazing the pushback that we get from some computer science uh, faculty uh, about that. So again, this is kind of where I'm at, been at the university, working with uh, ACM to help define IT as a discipline, and working with the accrediting agencies on uh, you know, what should be a, a accredited program, and then um, actually going out and helping with the accreditation on some of these things. All right. So um, I talked about ACM uh, about 10 years ago when information technology was coming into its own as we were defining, well, what does it mean to deliver an information technology program? Uh, ACM published a report of all the computing disciplines and kind of described what each of them should look like, what they should include. And why is this important? Again, go back to it's important so that when you all are hiring folks in uh, in your companies so you know, hey, if I hire somebody from a computer science program that's accredited, I know they're at least going to have these things when they come in, right? And again, what we're working on is in the future cybersecurity, you'll know that they're going to have these, these things specifically. So one nice thing about this report from ACM, it created these graphs that you can see here. Uh, it put the computing space and on the y-axis, it said, okay, in computing, we deal with things all the way up to organizations. So we hire IT employees, and how can we affect how they work? All the way down to computer hardware, right? Uh, and then, then on the x-axis here, we have, um, you know, some programs need to do high theory, right? We need to know about algorithms. Others need to do more with development. And so they took the computing disciplines, and they mapped them onto this... Um, this, uh, this chart here, and you can see I've put computer science and IT just to show you kind of where they fit. As you might expect, computer science students do a little bit more theory, right? They learn all those, all those specific 
technical things and theory-based things and how you know, registers work and, and RAM and, and very uh, theoretical types of things like that. They obviously do push into some application, but not specifically you know, out to the uh, setting things up. And then IT is kind of the mirror image of computer science. So our students come out, they know how to set things up, how to integrate things, um, and obviously how to secure things. We've always had that as part of our curriculum in IT. So again, this is what the major uh, computing uh, society says uh, that these programs kind of do. And of course, each program is going to be a little bit different, right? So computer science at UC is going to be a little bit different than computer science at NKU. But generally, they fall kind of in this uh, area, right? So any questions about kind of where this is? Or, By the way, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to throw something at me or, or raise your hand. Yeah. Does the University of We we have not yet. We've tried. Um, sorry, we've tried a couple of times where we've had problems at UC with this, the question is: Has UC participated in cyber defense? Is because we offer co-op, which is a great thing about our program. It also hurts with student groups because they would rather be going out and making money than actually participating in a group. So we get a lot of excitement for student groups in the freshman year before they co-op. Then they go co-op and they say, oh, wait, I'm actually making money here. So uh, we've, had, we've had difficulty. NKU's done it quite a bit every year. Uh, they do the cyber defense. We're hoping that we can start ramping up and doing that some more. But that's where we have the problems at UC. Again, it's a great thing we have co-op, but that's the downside sometimes. A lot of our students, even when they're not co-oping, uh, their companies hire them part-time to work while they're uh, going to school. Uh, so we've had that problem. Uh, yeah. Do you think that this situation you described that uh, only fraction of uh, educational institutions of either uh, integrate uh, IT security related courses right. as a requirement, do you think it's a market driven uh, or impression that uh, there is no need for IT security professionals? Uh, so so the question is, you know, why aren't these computer science programs requiring security in their programs? Is it market demand or is it something else? Um, I really think it has to do with uh, the, the faculty saying, you know, this is just another piece of computing. Uh, you know, we're dealing with the, the theory. Um, it shouldn't be required of every computer science uh, uh, student coming out. So we fac faculty are historically slow moving on things. Uh, so again, some of it comes just to us, uh, faculty. And, you know, a lot of these programs are jam-packed already. So we're saying, okay, if we're going to include something new, what are we going to take out? Right? So I think that's been some of it within the com some of the computer science uh, deg degree programs. So I don't know if that's a full answer, but I, that's my opinion on things. Okay? And again, not all uh, computer science programs ignore it, certainly. Um, to, to show you a couple other computing disciplines, information systems, these are the business folks, right? So they're dealing with, obviously, the organization a lot more with some implementation. The computer engineers, as you might expect, are down in the hardware, right? They're doing embedded systems, uh, Internet of Things, uh, things like that, right? So I was at a, uh, the, this defense contractors conference uh, a couple weeks ago in Dayton, they're really interested in, they needing security folks that are computer engineers. They're building uh, uh, weapon systems and things like that. So this is just kind of how uh, ACM has designated uh, these disciplines. So what I've come up with uh, uh, looking at this stuff is really these different disciplines answer different questions, right? So the IS folks answer the question, why do we need it? So they're involved in the business. They know how the business runs. They know where there's a problem, right, where they need to be more efficient. And so the IS folks really understand the business process and understand we need a better efficiency here. We need a network or a database, right? And then our computer scientists and our computer engineers answer the question, well, how do we make that tool? How do we make that operating system? How do we make that router device, right? So the Intels of the world are dealing with computer engineers, right? the Microsofts with computer scientists. And then us in IT, we're worried about, well, how do we make it work? So how do we apply these tools that were created by computer scientists and computer engineers uh, and apply them to the problems that are being identified by our information systems folks? So this is kind of 
one way that I like to think about this as we go forward. And of course, we'll talk about in a minute, well, where does, where, where is cybersecurity in all this? Um, one other kind of a separation that I like to put in here is, is when we started creating this uh, applied computing program, one of the major selling points that we would tell our students is you can get a job anywhere, right? So we have student, one of our graduates um, it works with the Bengals downtown. Um, one of them works with ESPN. Others work at schools, at universities, um, at banks. So the IT graduates really uh, work everywhere. And the same can be said for information systems graduates. Uh, and so what I do is I put this, whoops, sorry. I put this uh, line here. I can't even see this myself. All right. So to the, to the right of the line, um, this is uh, kind of what I call ubiquity. They can get jobs anywhere, right? It's not specific to an industry. Whereas a computer scientist and computer engineers, they're being hired by the Microsofts and the Intels and the Defense Department. So it's really an industry for those who are making the tools, right? Whereas IT and IS, we're being, those students are being hired uh, across the board, not specifically in one industry, okay? So that's another kind of separation that I like to put in there. So, so again, um, coming back then to what we're talking about, cybersecurity. So, um, again, I've been here 15 years, um, and I've taught a lot of the security courses that we've had. So really, from the time I started teaching security courses, people said to me, well, you guys need a whole track on cybersecurity. You guys should start a track, right? Rather than just having a systems and networking track and a software development track, you need a track in cyber. And my answer was always, well, really, students need to know everything we're teaching them first, and cyber should be a master's degree. Because I thought, well, you know, they really need to be these ninjas out there. They need to know all about computing. Have a hard time with this. They need to know all about computing first, and then we can teach them uh, much more the ins and outs about uh, cybersecurity. Um, so I really kind of had that refrain again and again. It kind of went back, my answer, so, you know, at the time, 15 years ago, hackers had to be really skilled, and uh, cybersecurity defense folks, in my mind, had to be really skilled as well. Well, what's happened, of course, over the past five years is I talk with folks, at you folks in the industry, saying, hey, we need more graduates here, right? We need people to fill these jobs. Um, and at the same time, we've had uh, a lot of tools come out for hackers. We have a lot of tools coming out for defense as well. And so really, you guys are starting to build teams that need more than just the ninjas, right? So you're doing a lot of things from compliance to uh, policy to working with, uh, you know, security awareness. So I look at Bo here at UC and look at his team. And sure, there's a couple ninjas on there, but he doesn't need a whole team of ninjas, right? He needs them all to have some level of knowledge about computing and cybersecurity, but he doesn't need to hire you know, a whole team of ninjas. That would be really cost prohibitive, um, and he really doesn't need that. So I've kind of come around, and obviously we've created a track in cybersecurity now to kind of some, uh, address some of that. You know, what can we give students in a four-year program um, where maybe they're not ninjas, but they know enough to contribute to your information security teams? And this is, and, and again, like IT, um, about 15 years ago uh, where we did it, um, so other universities are realizing the same thing, right? So other universities are talking with industries like you guys and saying, we need more people, we need more people. We ask, well, what do you need those people to do? And the first answer you give, you describe the ninja, right? And then I say, well, we can produce a couple of those a year, uh, and they're going to cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. And then you say, okay, well, maybe I don't need all of those skills. I need people to do this, this, and this. And so we've kind of come around. And so nationally... There's an effort now, well, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so I've come, come a, away from this whole ninja idea. So everybody doesn't have to be a rock star. All these guys presenting today, in my mind, are rock stars. They're fantastic. But for you, you students out there, you know, at a rock concert, there's one rock star, but there's a lot of support people there, right? A lot of people pulling cables, setting up the stage, doing all kinds of things. So in cyber, we don't need everybody to be a rock star. It's getting that big. So where does, so we have this ACM kind of graph. So where does cyber fit into this? And this is what we're thinking about. Well, gosh, 
Cyber really fits everywhere. Right? There's not really an easy place. Maybe we need a third dimension here or something. But really, you know, there's cyber in creating devices. So our defense contractors in Dayton need to put cyber in their devices. Uh, we need cyber in software development, obviously. But we also need folks who are, you know, setting up the networks to understand cyber. You know, who are doing uh, the systems analysis to understand cyber. You know, and I had my industry split here. Well, certainly there's a cyber industry you know, Morphic here or FireEye, uh, but certainly a lot of other folks uh, in cyber aren't in a cyber dis uh, specific industry. They're working for uh, the more traditional kind of um, companies here. Okay, so this is really the question. So where does cyber now fit into this? You know, what do we need to do as a university to create um, graduates that are going to be helpful for you all? And as you guys think about who you're hiring, you can think about, well, here's what IT students do. Here's what uh, CS students do, what do I need for this specific, specific job? Um, so before, since, since the universities didn't really come up with, you know, what does a cyber person look like, the federal government needed lots of these types of people. Uh, so NSA started these centers. They've since connected with DHS because a lot of people don't like the NSA, right? Uh, so now it's the DHS, NSA Centers for, cyber, for uh, Academic Excellence. Uh, NKU is a designated uh, cyber defense, so are we at, at UC. So basically in these, we have to go and match up what you're doing in your curriculum against what they say a cyber sh person should have. So this is from um, DHS, NSA. They say for a cyber defense, um, you need to, these are designated based on their robust degree programs and close alignment with specific security related knowledge. And then there's the cyber operations, which is a um, deeply technical interdisciplinary higher ed program firmly grounded in the computer science, computer engineering, and electrical engineering disciplines. And so again, here at UC, our cyber defense kind of is, uh, been driven by us in the School of IT, cyber operations has been driven by computer science here at IT, or at UC. But again, we work uh, pretty well together uh, on these designations. So again, first the federal government came around and said, well, there's no accreditation guidelines uh, yet, uh, so we're going to start doing this stuff. Well, again, a couple of years ago, uh, a group of uh, professors like me started saying, well, gosh, what should these programs look like? Can we create accreditation guidelines. A lot of this was led by uh, the military academies, uh, so faculty there were starting to develop some of these things. And so they created what they called the Cyber Education Project. And so there's a group of faculty getting together over the past couple years. One of the first things they did is say, well, what's the landscape look like? What do the cyber programs look like out there? So they created this word cloud based on looking at cyber-related uh, programs around the country and this is what they came up with. Um, information assurance used to be almost all of them. Now, though, cybersecurity is really the name that's popping up more and more um, from these programs that are being created. Uh, but again, this group was really interested in, well, what is this, what, can we create curriculum guidelines? Can we create accreditation guidelines so that programs can go under accreditation that's out from under the federal government? All right. So the Cyber Education Project worked for a couple years, and then like in IT, they got sent under ACM now. So ACM has a joint task force with uh, IEEE uh, on cybersecurity education. They're looking to put out their curricular guidelines by the end of 2017. So if you want to provide input, you can through me or through uh, their website or going to some of the conferences. So the CISSE conference in Philadelphia next month they'll be working. But this is the... The uh, definition they've come up with for cybersecurity, uh, computing-based discipline involving technology, people, and information and processes to enable assured operations. It involves a creation, operation, analysis, and testing of secure computer systems. It's an interdisciplinary course of study, including aspects of law, policy, human factors, ethics, and risk management, often in the context of adverse adversaries. Wow, that's a lot. We talked about why is computer science not doing this. That's a lot of stuff to put in there, right? So we're talking about some um, useful, not even just within computing, but now we're talking about, wow, these students maybe need to know something about psychology, about criminology, about policy, 
about business. So we're really talking about a lot of skills here that these, uh, these cybersecurity graduates need to have. Um, so they're basing their work um, on these draft knowledge areas as they create this curriculum. So these are the areas that they've identified um, uh, under kind of what we're looking at. So I want to just go through cyber defense they're talking about. So these are setting up the networks uh, to defend against uh, adversaries, um, adversaries, uh, cyber operations. So this is more the intelligence, reverse engineering, uh, some of the stuff I'm sure Coleman will get into. Uh, forensics, we all know what that is. Cyber physical systems, this is the SCADA systems uh, or all the Internet of uh, Things that we're talking about. Uh, secure software engineering, so secure coding. Uh, obviously, the students need to know about ethics uh, as they work through this stuff. They do need to know about policy, governance, and law. Uh, risk management is a big thing. Uh, and then these behavioral sciences that kind of I'm working my research in. So these are the draft areas that they're starting to build this kind of model curriculum around. And again, these are not set in stone. These are very much um, in draft. And again, what we're doing here is building, well, what does this graduate with a cybersecurity degree look like? What are they going to come out knowing, right? So this is where we are with, uh, within academia um, on spelling this out and figuring out, well, where does this cyber graduate fit? Um, over the past couple years, the other thing the federal government has done that's pretty nice is, well, I say it's nice, it's pretty funny, it's part of the NICE framework. So the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education which was uh, started in the Bush administration and now uh, revamped with the Obama administration. Uh, so they categorize kind of what do these cyber employees do and what kind of skills and um, aptitudes do they need to do these types of work. And they've separated out into, well, these people, they securely provision things, they operate and maintain, protect and defend, uh, analyze. So these are the type of things that most of you guys do on an everyday basis. They've got a nice... Um, uh, document. They, this is their cybersecurity workforce framework. This is really a working document um, that you can download and look at to say, okay, we need people in our company who are doing this analysis, right? What, do we, what should we title that? And you can go and see, you know, they've got uh, a number of different job titles in here, so you can do this. Or if you're a student, you can say, well, here's the type of things I want to do. What types of jobs should I look at? And the federal government really is using this for a lot of their hires. It's a great working document. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, instead of going through it, uh, I thought I'd show you how to get it. Um, so if you're not familiar with, um, let me Google that for you. It's one of my favorite things. Um, if I can start it. So nice framework. This is something I want to do with my students all the time, but I, I'm not that much of a jerk of a professor. Uh, to do that. So you can download the, the NICE framework uh, and work through it, figure out, you know, where, we're, where are we at, right? We're building this, um, this, um, this intelligence group like Nate was talking about. What do we need to advertise here? What kinds of skills do we want to look for in our graduates? And again, for you students to try to figure out, you know, what does this, uh, this space look like? It's really a, a great resource uh, to be able to use. <laughs> I guess somebody's okay. That's my, that's my son's favorite joke, by the way. When my daughter has her phone out. He gets up behind her. He says, okay, Google. It's his favorite joke in the world. Uh, he's 10. He loves that. All right. Um, so thanks to everyone, the people who organized it, all of our sponsors who set this stuff up. So that's, they're great. Um, if you want to contact me, uh, my email is there. Uh, I am on Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn. I do use Pinterest, so I, I really, I'm, I'm not posting, you know, what my daughter posts. I really use that as a nice kind of repository for articles. I find it nice for that. Um, so if you're interested, you can go there as well. Uh, any last minute questions before I let you guys run and have a beer? Nothing? All right. Thanks, guys.